if I if I wanted to take uh, take it from first principles, I suppose a, a, a safe thing to say would be that uh, creativity involves um, making things that don't exist. I suppose you know. I mean, I, I'm just playing with the word creation. I mean, creation mm. means to make something that doesn't exist. So, so creativity is that is an ability to do that. So. What can we? Where can we go next? And suppose, suppose for a moment that you could, you had a power to create something that doesn't exist. What is it that you would create? Well, it seems to me the first thing you would have to do is to imagine what you're going to do, to create. You wouldn't even be able to start the process of creation unless you could imagine the end result. So once, uh, so, so so then I, I land up with another word, uh, imagination. That seems to be absolutely critical to creativity. In fact, is, I could say it's a precursor for, for creativity. So then uh, the thought strikes me: if I had to measure creativity in two people, if I had to assess creativity in two people, is it possible that I could assess imagination instead? Would that give me a, a, a value which is at least proportional to what I'm trying to measure? Maybe that would do. And uh, you know, if, if you, if some of you may have seen, uh, Bill has a has a kind of a structure uh, inside which imagination actually figures quite prominently. Uh, but a lot of other things do as well. Now those things, uh, I am not so sure about. I mean, as as, uh, as you heard. My work is predominantly do with collaboration, but if you were to ask me, so do you think collaboration leads to creativity? My honest answer, really, my honest answer is, I don't know yet, because I have seen single children alone create magnificent structures, and I have seen groups of children together. Create things that no single individual could have done on their own. Both exist together. So, so, so I, if I have to make a definition, I would say creativity is a power. <laughs> For lack of a better word, creativity is a power uh, that uses imagination to define a path. If, if you see what I mean, that if I have to go from this point to that point, the way, uh, the, the end point depends on imagination. The way is possible to creativity. Is it a long way? Is it a short way? Uh, I, I don't know. I'll, I'll just end with uh, giving you one little idea. Okay? Uh, it, it's an idea which, uh, since my childhood, has sort of hung around in my mind. And it's very well known to science students, actually. You know that a, a, a beam of light uh, falling on a, uh, on a vessel full of water will bend. Everybody knows that. That's refraction. It comes in and it bends down. So if you take the end point and join it to the first point, that's a straight line. And you could say, but why didn't light take the straight line? Why did it take the longer way and bend? And there's a mathematician a long time ago called Fermat who had said that we've got it all wrong. The long way may be longer, but light takes less time to go that long way than it takes to go the short way because it travels at different speeds inside water and inside air. It's a bit of calculation, but it, and he called it the least time principle. And it said, it's not trying to minimize space, it's trying to minimize time. And then everybody leapt on his back and said, but does that mean the light beam knows where it's going? Physics fell apart. I'll leave you with that. <laughs> I don't have an answer. <laughs> oh, gosh. Uh, follow Fermat and Mitra. That's a difficult um, ask. Um, <laughs> 
As Sugata said, I, I, I have, uh, with uh, Guy and my colleague Ellen, developed a, an approach to creativity which is less definitional than descriptive. So it's more about the states and habits of mind which seem from um, both research and practice to foster creativity. Not always. It's not like night after day. And just as Sugata said, um, sometimes working in a group is creative. Sometimes it's downright um, anarchic. And sometimes it's anarchic and creative. And sometimes it's anarchic and you take a short line, um, but not in a very nice way. So all of those are complicated. And though those five habits would undoubtedly be number one, imagination, and number two, inquisitive. And then there's a trio of uh, habits, I think, which are about ultimately be being prepared to be different and make mistakes. So call that tenacity or persistence. Um, I would have collaboration in there. I think there are moments when we need to sit quietly on our own, um, meditatively sometimes, playfully, but sometimes we need to be with others. And I think there's a, an important corrective to early literatures of creativity, which is it sort of is something you're either born with or not. I, I think that's not true. I think all of us can get more creative. That means doesn't mean we can be Einstein necessarily or um, any other uh, supreme example of a discipline that you might call to mind. Um, but nevertheless, we can get better. So discipline would be part of my mix. Um, when um, Guy and I um, wrote a book for the BBC about 15 years ago called The Creative Thinking Plan, and we had to stop and think about these kind of things and even produce something a bit like a soundbite on this. And I think our first go was creativity is having a good idea when you need it. And that may seem rather simplistic, but it rather has some of those inquisitive, imaginative flights of fancy that uh, Sugata had. I think I've I've gone further than that now. And in my own head, it's having a good idea when you needing it, need it and realising that the first idea isn't necessarily the only one. And that implies that mistakes are your friends, potentially, that prototyping is very important, that feedback is very important, that you may, stick your, may need to stick your neck out a bit. Um, I find the, the model that uh, goes back to Anna Craft's idea of little c creativity, but is now referred to as the 4C model that uh, Ron Baghetto and James Kaufman came up with, a, a helpful reminder that there are different levels of creativity. So especially for uh, an early year's audience, um, uh, mini C creativity is when a child does something for the first time. It is, as Sugata said, something that wasn't there before. I, I love that. I mean, that's so simple. It just simply, it was not there before. And it is utterly original in the fullest sense to that individual. But it's not in the great kind of scheme of things. It's not original because Lots of people have had those thoughts, but for that child in that moment, it's original. And then the next level up being little c or everyday creativity. I think that's what we're increasingly seeing as being a joyful thing to focus on in schools uh, and, and educational settings, formal and informal of all kinds. And it may be at the playful end and it may be at the more studied end. And then I think what many people on this call probably do in their professional life, there's something that they call pro C, which is quite close to Anders Ericsson's idea of kind of deliberate practice over much time where you're so expert that you're able, without really knowing it, to think and make connections that are quite subtle and interesting and, and, and worth, worth pursuing. And then finally, there's that very, very small group of people, the kind of big C um, creatives of uh, all kinds in all subjects, of all genders, of all types, who just are extraordinary uh, and they defy the category probably. 